Hello Element 14, it's Goff back again with his Media Centre and as you can see I've managed to get a few things done. Um, I thought maybe the last video was a bit quick in terms of going through the settings so maybe I should just go through some of the settings which you'll probably be most interested if you're starting your own RAS BMC uh, Media Centre. The first setting which I found most beneficial is under Programs, RAS BMC Settings and that is to get the overclocking done. Um, for the people that are more adventurous, they will use uh, the advanced overclocking. And you can see here, I've spent a little bit of time tweaking my overclocking settings so that I can get the maximum performance out of my Raspberry Pi. Now this is not without risk. If you choose to overclock severely, you may find that the system becomes unstable, maybe it crashes uh, more often. Maybe you'd even corrupt your SD card, so make sure you have some way of restoring a sane image or maybe even back up your SD card before you start tinkering with these settings. So what you can do is you can adjust each of these clock settings independently. What I like to do is, I don't want to use the mouse, because if I use the mouse you get all these odd values. The best way is to just hit the slider into one end and just tap with the arrow key on the keyboard and you get nice 5 MHz steps. So you can tweak it to the value which works the best. My suggestion is to go for some settings which are already uh, known to be good for most of the users in the community. For example, um, this over voltage, it's a good idea to set a little bit of over voltage, either 4 or 6, uh, if you want to get uh, say 850 megahertz up to 1000 megahertz CPU. Uh, the CPU seems to have a big bearing on the fluidity of the user interface. Likewise, these core image sensor and GPU overclocks, as far as I've been told, the values should be pretty much the same. They start off at 250, but I've found that I can increase them up to 540 or even 550 without seeing any vis visible um, artifacting or any any anomalies in the video. Likewise with the RAM, increasing the RAM speed does have an impact on performance. Normally it starts off at 400. Uh, 450 would be a safe value uh, if you're not that adventurous, but I've managed to get up to 540 without much of an issue. So I do, um, I do suggest if you're a little bit adventurous to try out the advanced overclocking because as you can see the interface is much more fluid now. It's actually very very nice to use compared to before. And I think the biggest indicator of this is to look at the render rate for the actual screen. You'll notice how it's sitting above 60 frames per second, which is a very good achievement for a board like this. Prior to this, before overclocking, you would see something like 38 or maybe 40 frames a second, and sometimes that would dip down to 12 or 10. So it really does feel a lot smoother when you do that. Now the other thing that's going to be most interesting to most of you would be the overscan and video calibration settings. Uh, the thing to note is that the config.txt overscan settings don't actually work within XBMC because it's operating in a 3D mode. So what you need to do is go to video calibration. And under video calibration, if you just pre keep pressing the OK key, you can toggle through the different calibrations you have. So you might not see that corner, that blue corner in the uh, top left of the screen. That's the overscan compensation corner. By default, depending on your TV, it may be hidden. So what you have to do is use the cursor keys, press down to move the screen down, press uh, right to move the screen across until you can see that corner come up. That will ensure that you can see uh, virtually everything in your videos from corner to corner. Now most screens have about 5% of overscan just to cut off the edges because the edges might contain distracting flashing dots or miscolored video. So it's really up to you how far you want to set your overscan compensation. I normally hide a little bit of the arrow, but uh, I keep most of it there because I like to see the corners of my videos. Uh, if you tap OK, the next uh, compensation is for the bottom right corner. So you do the same thing, but instead you'll be pressing the up and the left arrow keys. You can also change the subtitle position to make sure you can read them and also the pixel aspect ratio. So this allows you to correct for uh, say screens where the pixels are not square and uh, the image may be slightly stretched. So by performing these calibrations you'll ensure that your RAS BMC setup 
performs and looks the best possible. So say the time is not cut off the top corner of the screen, um, certain icons and buttons aren't cut off the side. Okay, so last time I said that AirPlay doesn't actually work for video on Rasp EMC, and that's not entirely true. What I seem to find is that Rasp EMC's AirPlay performance is a bit um, inconsistent. So sometimes it will be detected as an audio endpoint, like an, uh, like an AirPlay audio unit, but other times it's detected as an AirPlay video unit, which allows it to perform like an Apple TV. So sometimes you may need to reboot your Rasp EMC, uh, other times you may re need to reboot your iPad to make it all happen. Uh, but one thing I've noticed is that if you enable password support, it doesn't seem to work properly for video and it comes up with a, a, an unknown error had occurred. Um, but for photo viewing, it works just fine. Um, for video, for example, I'm just loading one up now on my iPad. You can see it's actually pushing the stream to Rasp EMC now and it's buffering and then it will actually play it, which it's quite a nice touch. This is happening all in 1080p as well, which um, which I didn't expect. But AirPlay does work. You just have to be a little bit patient and persistent with it. Um, the great thing now is, after the overclock, the actual interface is much, much smoother. You can see the mouse moves a little bit more fluidly than before. Um, the latency of the lag between me moving the mouse and something happening on screen is now much, much less with the overclock. So I highly recommend all users, if they're serious about running it as a media center, that they explore the advanced overclocking. Um, it really does make a difference between being a media center you have to be a little bit patient with and one that's really actually quite enjoyable to use. So I guess that's the end of this one. Uh, I hope that has helped you get the most out of your Raspberry Pi.